Welcome to Artistic Adventures. We're into part two of our angel doll project. And I should say this is really the costume and the wings because the video I did of the dress part kind of got lost. So anyway, we have lots to show you and we'll get started. We're gonna be working on the wig. I didn't show you the actual making of the wig because it's exactly the same as the wig that I made for the Cleopatra doll, which we just finished. Uh, this is, uh, I just lifted up the face. I've got the top knot up there, the part that I'm gonna uh, make into the part to cover up the glue. So at this point, I'm just taking that top knot part down. All the glue is dried on the pieces. I did use the black alpaca fiber that I like so much. And it all went on just exactly like I did the Cleopatra wig. So basically, uh, all the way starting at the bottom gluing the fiber up to the top and then we have this part that I had glued underneath through a hole and this part we're going to just split and turn it into her part and that will hide all the glue that we've put down and make it look like a natural part. Now this uh, doll uh, is meant to have a cherub looking hairstyle so it's going to be short and curly and the part may or may not actually show but I like to have it in there anyway just because I think it makes it look like you know a real real hair so at this part I'm going to cut some of this hair off I'm going to cut it extra long because I really don't know exactly how long I need it to be to make the look that I want and I'm going to end up curling all of it and then I'll go back and style it later on in the video after I finish all the other pieces. So I've got it cut down to this point, kind of like a bowl cut, only really long, like thing from the Adams family. <laughs> so I'm going to use this frizzy, it's really just, it's hairspray, and uh, put some on each strand as I curl it with my tiny one fourth inch curling iron. And just, I'm going to do the curls like in all different directions all over her head. So it's going to look uh, in the, you know, in the final end piece with sort of this disorganized curl look. But you can see there that the uh, part looks really nice. And we'll just sort of curl it up around that and keep that where it is. So I'm going to start just taking little small pieces. The smaller pieces you can make, the, you know, the better the curl will be. Alpaca fiber curls well, but it doesn't hold the curl. So that's why I put the hairspray on it. And I also leave it after I've curled it in the little curl so that it can set and, and it tends to stay longer rather than just immediately combing it out. So just did this all over her head. I did that off camera because that is really time consuming and gets really boring. <laughs> and uh, you guys don't when I actually watch that. But this is how I ended up after I curled all the little curls all the way around. I didn't really curl it on the very top. I left that there because I want the curls to sort of frame her face. And I'm just gonna leave them like this while I work on the rest of the costume. And surprise, <laughs> there's the costume. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. I thought I had the video for the dress, but basically I just took white satin from a an old wedding gown that had this trim on it. I thought it was really pretty and uh, made use of that. And then I took an applique off of the wedding gown and attached that with glue to the front of the dress. So I wanted to have some focal point that made it look really special. And now to tie in with the black wings and with the hair color, I'm gonna add some black Swarovski crystals to the dress because I want to sort of have you know, a sense of continuity to the whole design of this. And I think the little black crystals really add a lot to it. It did, you know, you might think, oh no, that's gonna make it look goth or whatever, but no, I think it just, it sort of just added a nice touch to it that tied in with the black of the hair and the, uh, and the wings. And there aren't, there aren't gonna be that many of them anyway. So it's just a sprinkling of the black to make it look like it goes with the rest of the doll's outfit. And I'm just sort of sprinkling them around. I'm using E6000 to glue them to the fabric. 
It'll, that usually works really well. Just put a little dab and then pop the crystal on top of it. And I went all the way around the dress because I wanted the front and back to look equally as good. <laughs> and put I did put a few on the bodice as well as the lace of the skirt. And I think that ended up sort of drawing everything together with the costume so that it wasn't like completely white. And I think I could have even maybe put a few more, but I think it turned out really nice. I like it. I had those pearls there you see on the side. I was going to put those around the neckline, but I ended up looking like it would be too much. So I just, I just put those aside for another project. So I'm pulling the camera out now so you can see there's, there's the whole doll. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to get the camera situated so you can see the whole costume. All right, and now I took the shoes that actually came with this doll. And I kind of like them because they don't have a heel. And I intend to put some feathers on them because... I think that sort of goes with the outfit, like she's flying, and it sort of seems cool not to have heels with shoes that have wings on them. So basically all I'm going to do is just use my gold paint and paint over the purple plastic of these shoes. There was, I think there was one thing I had to cut off. I'm trying to remember now. It had something on it that I had to cut off, like a monster high skull or something. So uh, I just wanted to have the, the basic shoe. So now that I've got, I had to put about three coats of the gold on to make it look really, really gold. So now I'm taking the feather that I have, these black feathers. They have a little bit of iridescence to them, which I really like. And I'm gluing that to the side of the shoe. And then I'm going to take three different size crystals that are not completely black. They, they sort of have a uh, purple bluish iridescence. And I'm just going to glue those in a bunch right over the end of the feather. Had about, I think there were two different sizes. There was one large one and then two, two smaller ones. And that gave it sort of a nice glow, and I like the way that the iridescence of the gems have sort of the same colors as the as the feather, some like green and blue and purple kind of shades in them. So there's three little crystals there on the on the side of the shoe, and I did exactly the same thing to the other shoe. Put the feather down, and then put some E6000 down, and then glued the three different crystals there. So those feathers will go on the outside of the foot. And then they look like, you know, she's got wings on her feet. And I like the fact that there's no heel because that makes it look like she's flying. She doesn't need to land on the ground. And that's how they look on the doll. I think they turned out really nice. And they, they add a lot to the costume too. I thought about putting something on the front, uh, those straps, but I thought that would be just be too much. Really, I think the feathers and the crystals made them just perfect. And they sort of match the crystals on the dress. And now I'm going to show you how I did the wings. Uh, this is similar to the wings that I did for the Angel Topper doll that I did at Christmas. So basically I'm taking that foam paper as the base and I'm using a white pencil to mark out where I want the wing, what I want the wings to look like from behind the doll. And once I have that design, I'm going to cut that out. I'm going to cut two for each side, as you can see, because I'm going to glue the end up gluing those together to hide the wire that's going to attach it to the doll. So I just want to take a quick look and make sure that they look the way I want them to. I don't want them to be too big. I want them to be sort of nice and small. All right, so now this is the wire I'm using. It's pretty heavy. I think it's 18 gauge, if I remember correctly, or 16. It's pretty thick. And I'm just bending it to match the shape of the wing. But I'm leaving a piece coming out the bottom. And this is what's going to attach it to the doll. 
and I have way more than I need, so, but I know I can always cut it, right? <laughs> All right, now I'm just uh, gluing around the outside, and then I'm going to place the top down on this. We're going to set that aside and do the exact same thing to the other wing. Don't worry that it's coming up. I'm going to show you how I, I got them to stick together here in a minute. But first of all, just to get get the process done for both wings, do that glue on the outside again. And you want to put some aluminum foil across the top. Make sure you've got them lined up. And then set something heavy on top of them. And I'm just using the case. I have a, I have a case of Copic markers and they're pretty heavy. <laughs> Took two hands to get them. So I'm just setting those down on top of the, the wings. And I'm just going to let those set for an hour or two and make sure that the glue is dry. And this way, with the pressure on them, they'll keep their shape and the edges will be glued together. So after a couple hours, I came back. And as you can see, the wings have, have glued together. And they don't stick too bad to the arm foil. You can always pull that off. And if you had to, you could always glue down any places that didn't stick really well. So now that we've got that part done, we're going to be able to start putting the, the feathers on the wings. Now, first thing I'm going to do, you don't have to do this right now, but I guess, I guess you do. You want to take the side that's going to be close to the body and just cut a little slit. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can bend the wire up to the base of that slit. And that's going to go into the body. And the front part of that foam will hide where, I, where the wire is. So it's going to be bent up so that it's not coming at the base. In other words, the wire is going to go up into that slit when I bend it, if you see what I mean. You could wait and bend that wire later if you wanted to. I just went ahead and did it now because I want to be able to glue the feathers around it. Now I'm going to start out with these uh, smaller feathers and put those around the edges. So I put my row of glue down and then I'm just clipping off the very tips of these rooster feathers. And if you remember, these are the same feathers I used on the Evil Queen from Once Upon a Time on her collar. I had some left, so I thought I'd, I would use them on these on these wings. So I want to make sure that the these, which are, are going to show around the edges, are really pretty and they're small. And now the rest of the feathers, I just bought dyed black feathers in a bag. I guess they're chicken feathers. I'm not really sure. But I am still clipping off the top part. I'm just using the end. And you can see I put a row of glue about a half an inch above the other row. And now I'm just overlapping the feathers so they cover up the glue of the, of the lower feather line. And I'm having some tea. <laughs> I forgot that was in there. <laughs> so just keep doing that. It must not be nighttime when I film this. <laughs> it just must be morning. I'm drinking tea. All right, so I put another row. And again, it's about a half an inch above. And once again, I'm placing the feathers, making sure that those at the top are sort of even with the top of the wing of that foam. And then these will cover up the second row of glued feather. And then I had a little bit left up there at the top. You can see after I finished that. So I went back in, put one more row. And then I didn't show this in the video, but I did put some glue, uh, a row of glue on top of the seam there. And then took little small pieces of feather and glued that on top of it just to cover up the seam. I didn't put that in the video, but uh, that's how I handled that seam showing through. And once you get through with um, putting the feathers on both sides, you're really able to see where you need more feathers to cover things up. And also you can do a little bit of trimming and making sure you know that the feathers are in the right design. Here I'm just trimming off the tops that were sticking up above where the foam is. 
and then I was able to go back like I said and just put a row of glue down the top of that uh, seam after I put the other feathers on and then just cut little pieces of uh, strands of feather to cover that up. So now that I've got the that part done, that's the part that's going to show because that will be, those wires are going to go into the doll's back. So now I'm doing what's basically the back of the feathers. Actually, I've already done that, and now I'm going to uh, uh, show you how I attach them to the doll. So I'm just making sure where I want the hole in her back to be, because I'm going to drill a hole in her so that the wing is positioned properly. And I'm just using my handy dandy little electric tool here. And I measured the wire against the bit to make sure that it's about the same size. So the wire will go into the hole. And just make sure you don't go all the way through the doll. <laughs> so that can happen. Now I measured how far the, the bit went in to the hole. And I'm going to measure that against the wire and clip off the excess. So that went into the hole that far. So I'm going to take my wire cutters and cut that excess wire off. So we want to use as much wire as possible because that helps make it stable, but we want it, the wing, the feather part to be flush against the skin, so we, want, we don't want it to be pushing up because we have too much, too long of a wire. So I'm doing the same thing on both sides. Now I'm going to take the doll and put some E6000 down in that hole. But first, really, I could have done this after, but I went ahead and made a hole with the just a pointed tool. You don't want to use your drill for this because it will catch the fabric and then it will twist it around and then you'll have a ruined dress. So I just use a, a hole just to poke it through there and make it a little bit easier for the wire to go through when you're ready. So I just hold the tip of the glue against the hole really tightly and then squeeze and we hope that some of the glue goes into the hole. And you're going to have some on the outside as well. And then we're going to close the dress. I'm going to stick that pointy thing in there one more time. And then we're going to put glue on the outside to hold it. And then stick the wire into the hole and press those wings down. And I I actually held them for a while to make sure that they were secure while they dried and in the right shape. And that was the procedure to put the wings in. And I, I love how they turned out. And I love the way they look with the dress too. So now that we've got the wings done, and the dress, and the shoes, and the face, <laughs> we're going to fix the hair. I like doing this last because the hair can get really messed up when you're working on the doll's costume if you don't. And unless you can take the wig off, which on this doll it's glued down so I couldn't. So I know I have a lot of hair here, more than I need. So now I'm going to start picking out those curls because I want it to look really uh, fluffy, like really fluffy curls. Remember this is supposed to look like a, a cherub, little baby angel. So we want it to just be curls around her face and going down to just the lower part of her neck in the back. And basically, I'm just trimming the hairs. I don't know how to describe this. Just trimming it to the shape that you want, basically. After you've pulled out the fibers to where all the curls are, are sort of pulled out. Then you're just basically, you know, making it, I guess, round looking, really. But I did leave that part in the top. Because I think that was more realistic. If you have any places where the curls come out, you can always go back and recurl, put a little bit more hairspray on it, and get it to stay. Sometimes you don't get as much on some curls as others. Now, if you do have to spray, which I am going to spray here, I want to spray the front of her hair so I can fix it better. Make sure that you put something over the doll's face. You don't want to get the hairspray on the face. So after I did that, then I'm just using my fingers to sort of place the curls where I want them. Put a little bit of hairspray on the back also for the same reason, just to get those curls to stay. Pushing the curls in. 
And then also on the side, making sure that I don't get any hairspray on the doll's face. I did seal her face with Mr. Super Clear, but I did use the Liquitex matte medium as the base. I'm finding that works best for me. I do like the matte finish. That's really pretty on her face. So that's basically the hairstyle, the cherub hairstyle. And let's look at some finished pictures. This is a close-up of her face and the hair. I think it turned out really cute. And there's a full view of her with her wings. You can see my Blythe dolls in the back and poor, <laughs> poor Cleopatra was back there unfinished too. I don't know if you saw her. Here's another look at the shoes with the feather on the side and the crystals. And that's how they look from the front. And I did put a ring on her finger, and it's the same iridescent color that I used on the shoes. And I painted her fingernails silver. You can hardly tell that, but they are painted silver. And then there's a look at the back with the wings. She is on a stand, so that blocks the dress a little bit. But And there's a kind of a side view, so you can see how the hairstyle looks from the side. And another full view look. So this project turned out to be really fun. I'd never done one where I, I would try to make it look like another, like a person. <laughs> so I was really pleased with how it turned out. I don't know that I could do it to every person, but this one fortunately uh, worked out really well. So stay tuned for next week. I've got kind of a surprise coming up, something a little unusual, because I had an interesting find at the thrift store the day before yesterday. So uh, stay tuned, and uh, if you haven't already, be sure and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Thanks, and bye.